ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Chapter 5, Text 5 <clears throat> Yat Sankhyai Prapyate Sthanam Tat Yogai Api Gamyate Ekam Sankham Cha Yogam Cha Yaha Pashati Saha Pashati Yan Sankhai Prapyate Sthanam Tadyo gairapi gamyate Ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha Ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha Yaf pashyati sa pashyati Yat sankhyaif prapyate sthanam Tadyo gairapi gamyate Ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha Yaf pashyati sa pashyati Why is this here? Yeah, don't just leave it anywhere. Put it neatly like this. You can leave it on the side here. If I need it, I'll take it. Yat sankhyaif prapyate stanam Tadyo gaira pigamyate Yegum yum kam cha yogam cha Yaf pashyati sa pashyati Yat sankhyai prapyate stanam Tadyo gaira pigamyate Ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha Yaf pashyati sa pashyati Yat sankhyai prapyate sthanam Tadyo gaira pigamyate Ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha Yaf pashyati sa pashyati Ladies please Ladies Yat sankhyai prapyate sthanam Tad yoga ira pigamyate Ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha Yaf pashyati sa pashyati Yat sankhyai prapyate sthanam Tad yoga ira pigamyate Ekam sankham cha yogam cha Yaf pashyati sa pashyati 
Yatsankhyai prapyate sthanam Tadyogaira pigamyate Ekam sankhyam cha yogam cha Yaf pashyati sa pashyati Yat <coughs> what? Sankhyaihi by means of Sankhya philosophy. Prapyate is achieved. Sthanam place tat that yogai by devotional service. Api also, gamyate, one can attain, ekam, one, sankhyam, analytical study, cha, and, yogam, action in devotion, cha, and, yaha, one who, Pashyati sees Saha he Pashyati actually sees one who knows that the position reached by means of analytical study can also be attained by devotional service and who therefore sees analytical study and devotional service to be on the same level sees things as they are, purport. The real purpose of philosophical research is to find the ultimate goal of life. Since the ultimate goal of life is self-realization, there is no difference between the conclusions reached by the two processes. By Sankhya philosophical research, one comes to the conclusion that a living entity is not a part and parcel of the material world, but of the Supreme Spirit whole. Consequently, the Spirit soul has nothing to do with the material world. His actions must be in some relation with the Supreme. <clears throat> when he acts in Krishna consciousness, he is actually in his constitutional position. In the first process, Sankhya, one has to become detached from matter. And in the devotional yoga process, one has to attach himself to the work of Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> Factually, both processes are the same, although superficially one process appears to involve detachment and the other process appears to involve attachment. <clears throat> detachment from matter and attachment to Krishna are one and the same. One who can see this sees things as they are. Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shreshtam Manamapi Shachi Putram Atrasvarupam Rupam Tasyagrajam Urupurim Maturim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhavasham Prapto yasya pratita kripaya shri gurum tam natosmi. Vandeham shri guru shri ataf padakamalam shri gurun vaishnavangscha. Shri rupam sagrajatam sahagana raghunatan vitam tam sajivam. Sadvaitam, Savadhutam, Parijana, Sahitam, Krishna, Taitanya, Devam, Sri Radha, Krishna, Padan, Sahagana, Lalita, Sri Vishaka, Vitam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> Different processes, ultimately aiming at the same goal. <clears throat> to
to scholars who study Hinduism, which mostly means in the West, because in India people just are Hindus, they don't bother studying it. In the West they, they study everything, they think everything, you should study everything. <coughs> Anything and everything. <coughs> but they're often bewildered by, not often, they're always bewildered by the huge conglomeration or non-conglomeration of <coughs> ways and paths and beliefs in Hinduism and they can't understand it all, which bothers them because they have this idea that they should be able to understand everything. But again, Hindus don't bother trying to understand everything. They just, they're just Hindus, that's all. <laughs> you don't have to understand it, you just do it, that's all. <clears throat> and although only two paths are mentioned here, there are many, many paths, not that all the paths are the same. <coughs> Jotomot Totopot is not upheld here. There are many paths, uh, many activities, and even within a certain school there may be different levels, just like in devotional service, Krishna consciousness, there are different levels and different rules prescribed for different people at different levels. <coughs> There are, there's a devotional service according to the Gorya system, and according to the Madhva system, and then within the Madhva system there'll be for Brahmanas and for the Dasakutam, and within the Gorya system there are traditional Advaita Pariva, Narottam Pariva, and Nityananda Vamsa, and so on, Advaita Vamsa. So it all may seem very confusing, but the actual Shastric path is to be, the actual Shastric path is meant for Krishna consciousness, ultimately. <clears throat> uh, even though it may not seem like that. In, in the Gita, Krishna says, Vaidaishtasavarahamevavedya. In all the Vedas, I am to be known. But the great scholars, they come and look at the Vedas and they say, well, you don't find Krishna much. Where's Krishna? It's all just uh, it's some idea made up by the Vaishnavas because they want to establish themselves as supreme. Uh, we find a clue to all of this in Krishna's teachings in the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam. Parokshavada Rishayo. Parokshan Chamama Priya, where he says that the rishis, they often speak indirectly, and that I also like that. Now this statement may be taken in various ways, <clears throat> but um, one way it's to be understood is that even though much of the Vedas don't appear to directly speak of Krishna, of course, Madhvacharya has shown how all the statements do directly speak about Krishna, but you have to know the code, so to speak. <clears throat> but it, uh, everything's ultimately aimed at Krishna. <clears throat> uh, much of the Varnashram system may seem not to be aimed at Krishna. <clears throat> uh, people within Varnashram, they may not all be Vaishnavas, they may worship various gods. But specifically Srila Prabhupada wanted to re-establish in human society Daiva Varnashram, Dharma, which is clearly aimed at Krishna. Although demigod worship is there. <laughs> Otherwise, what are you going to do? If, if we don't allow demigod worship and we don't allow Within broader society, if, if demigod worship is not allowed, then there's no uh, scope for people to eat meat. And you say, well, why do, you want to, why do you want to have people eat meat? Well, you don't want people to eat meat, but people are going to eat meat. So for them, there has to be some allowance. That's allowed within Vedic culture. Meat eating is allowed under certain rules. So if you don't have the system whereby the uh, 
the uh, chamars, they can take out the dead cows and eat the meat, or where the uh, Kali worshippers can worship Kali and sacrifice goat or chicken or a buffalo if they're rich, they can sacrifice a whole buffalo. Uh, then you'll come to slaughterhouse. Then there'll be then there'll be indiscriminate animal killing. So in the Krishna conscious movement, we're not promoting meat eating, but we we may not that for the Vaishnavas, but there may be allowance for that also. And then people get bewildered and, and wonder what's going on. Uh, <clears throat> Isn't Hinduism, to use the very broad term, isn't it meant for uh, you know, detachment from the world? The, the most famous city in India throughout the world, well, it's probably Delhi nowadays, or New Delhi to be precise. But uh, traditionally, and this is nothing new, this goes back hundreds of years, it's been Varanasi, which is famous for its spiritual ambience. Uh, but tr traditionally, Varanasi has been a place of death. People go there to die. A place of contemplation of death. People go there to prepare to die. A place of Mithanjai, of Lord Shiva, who helps people to conquer over death. And it's also traditionally been a place of material enjoyment. That's not so well known. Uh, at all levels, uh, even now there's Banarasi Pan, that's supposed to be the best. <laughs> if you really want to enjoy, then you have to go to Varanasi. And up to the present, the biggest red light district, you know what red light district is, translator? Brothel area. In Asia, happens to be in, guess what, Varanasi. You may say, well, it's terrible. It's supposed to be a spiritual city. But it's always been a place of material enjoyment, ultimately means, you know what, <laughs> sex enjoyment. It's always been there. It's, uh, the, from time to time, you get these social workers coming along. Well, it's... We have to save the women from prostitution. But there's always, been, as, as long as human civilization has been there, there's been prostitution. As long as there will be human civilization, there will be prostitution. So you can go and wave your social welfare flag as much. We didn't start the ISKCON stop the brothel movement yet. We got stop the cancer movement, but we didn't get the stop the brothel movement yet. Betty Bachao movement, and so on. <clears throat> so it's not that such things are forbidden in Vedic culture. Of course, kidnapping young girls and selling them off into prostitution, that's not allowed, but somehow or other, girls do end up in that. And we don't endorse it, but at the same time, Realistically speaking, it, it is going on. It's just like slaughterhouses. We don't want slaughterhouses, but we don't, we're not so utopian that we think that just by, by diktat, by, by making an order, all meat-eating will stop. <clears throat> That's not possible. Maybe if the king is very uh, strong and there's a very strong dharmic culture, that can be. But it's the nature of the material world. People come here to enjoy the material world. So there are people at different levels. And Vedic culture gives uh, different levels. Uh, Vedic culture, Vedic civilization is supposed to be, well, the very meaning of Vedic civilization is that it's conducted under the uh, ages of the Dharma Shastras, of which Manu Sanghita is the prime, uh, and therein Manu says that pravritting sarva bhutanam, that everyone in this world is engaged in activities for material enjoyment, and Manu is 
basically uh, giving rules how to conduct society. Karma Kanda for people in Varnashram, but also very clearly pointing towards, ultimately toward Krishna. So, pravritir sarva bhutanam, but he also says, nivritis tu maha phalam. But the, the, the greatest goal, the people in Karma Kanda, they want some fruit, fruitive activities. But the greatest fruit is to be had from nivriti, detachment. So within the uh, Vedic lifestyle there, the Chatur Varga, the four pursuits of life, dharma, artha, karma, and moksha. <clears throat> but Vedic culture specifically points towards moksha or detachment, while allowing that most people, pravritir sarva bhutanam, while allowing that most people are going to be engaged in uh, fruitive activities, it also uh, points that the, the real goal is renunciation. And, and this uh, renunciation of the world, austerity, we, we see it's, uh, even though not many people pursue full-time austerity and renunciation, it's uh, a central point in, in Vedic culture. And even though not everyone uh, follows austerity and renunciation, uh, uh, that's their focus of life. But at least among the, uh, at least among the higher statuses, Vaishyas, Kshatriyas, and Brahmanas, they're, they're, in, engaged, they're supposed to be engaged in the higher goal of life. But we'll find that the austerity and renunciation is there. For instance, going on pilgrimage. When you go on pilgrimage, you, however much you may enjoy your life the rest of the time, and however much you enjoy, that means according to Vedic rules also. Not that you're, this idea of just letting the senses go wild, that's not there at all. Everything's controlled according to Vedic rules. If, in sex is there, marriage is there, but the idea is that one should get married. Manu again says that putrarte kriyate bharya. One gets married for the sake of giving birth to children specifically, sons. And there's a reason for that also, that uh, pinda putra prayojanam. It is required that the sons will continue the uh, family tradition of uh, offering pinda for the forefathers. <clears throat> so everything is uh, understood according to Krishna's plan. Krishna has a plan for everyone. Uh, <clears throat> and even the, the austerity, renunciation, that may not be a central part of people's lives, but we'll find that, for instance, uh, women, they will fast once a week, or what's for for the sake of their husbands, uh, or they, they'll, or when you go on pilgrimage, there are so many. Then there'll be so many austerities to be performed. It's not just a matter of jumping on a train, going to a place, and taking darshan and eating some local prasadam and coming back. But there are so many rules to follow, and on, one has to walk. It may take thirty days to walk to a place, and there's. During that time, there's, there's to, supposed to be no mundane talk and no uh, sex, and so many rules have to be followed. So everyone practices austerities, if not full time, at least some part of the time. And we find in, in the Bhagavatam again and again and again, we find such and such king renounced the world and went to the forest to perform austerities. Uh, <coughs> Uh, it's, it's very much central. Uh, the idea of austerity is to purify the consciousness be because the consciousness is inclined to uh, indulge, uh, push us towards sense indulgence, which causes 
all the problems, the, 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 the pravriti, the desire to enjoy this material world that is entangling us in the material world. Um, but the idea of austerity is to become detached from sense enjoyment and to steady the mind so that one can contemplate and understand the highest goal of life. It, of course, it, it doesn't always work like that. Um, <clears throat> if from the beginning one performs austerity for the, sa for the sake of sense enjoyment, then uh, that austerity doesn't purify the consciousness. And a prime example of that is Hiranyakashipu, who performed austerities not for purifying his consciousness, but for the sake of getting power, so that he could enjoy the material world at an, 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 at an enhanced level, which he was actually able to do. <clears throat> so really, performing austerities, uh, becoming detached from this world, everything has to be done if, if we're actually to get nivritis to maha palam, if we're actually going to get the, the highest goal of detachment, then we have to hear from sadhus uh, about what is the uh, ultimate goal of life. <clears throat> Otherwise, we may perform so many uh, austerities, but or we may labor hard in uh, trying to become self-realized and not get any tangible result. <clears throat> Tushavagatinam, the, 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 trying to beat the husk. Uh, already the, the rice has been husked, and we go on beating it. You see, if you beat the, the if you beat the whole grain of rice, then the grain comes out and the husk is left. But it looks the same. From outside, it looks the same. So you say, well, I'll go on beating it, I'll get some more rice. But you can go on beating it as much as you like, and you won't get any more rice grain. It's, it's a futile effort. To do so, <clears throat> and however hard we beat it, and however long we beat it, it's shrama evi hi kevalam. It's simply work, that's all. We might get strong muscles, but we won't get any rice to eat. We can feed it to the cows, but there's no use to beat it. So this detachment is the, the main qualification expected of sadhus. It's very much part of the Vedic culture or ongoing Hindu culture that there are sadhus saintly people. And the main thing that's expected of them uh, is that they should be visibly detached from this world, clearly detached from this world. And if one has a long beard and red cloth and chants shlokas, but is seen to be a sense enjoyer, no one will take him seriously. <clears throat> Just like we have from Tamil Nadu, now absconding, he ran off to South America, is it? From Tiruvannamalai, this. What's his name? Paramahamsa, he calls himself. Not at all a Paramahamsa, but he's just making a show. But he's, he's uh, a sense enjoyer. People don't like that. Some people are foolish to follow him, but if you want to, if you want to be a sense enjoyer, then you'll be like us. We're sense enjoyers, but we're not pretending to be sadhus. People don't like that. You can't be a sadhu and be a sense enjoyer. And then it's expected, sadhu, they show detachment in their life by no sex life, or they may be married, and, but they may be, they're not, gross sense enjoyers. Sadhu also, maybe. Generally we think of sadhu as a, as a sannyasi, but maybe a married person also. Um, but 
dignified life, just like we say, Brahmins, traditional Brahmins, they uh, married, but then they, they don't, there, there are no gross symptoms of lust or greed in them. If you give some dakshina, it's not that they get all excited. They're, even in family life, they're practicing detachment, and everyone will respect that if they're so, any what cultured. The Brahmins, it's not just that they do pujas. And, of course, sometimes there are greedy Brahmins, and that's always in the, in the holy places, that always seems to have been a problem as far back as records have been kept of greedy pandas who are there just to, to f fleece the people. That. Uh, Someone told me he went to I knew Gaya, he went for his father's interring his father's ashes or some ceremony there. And then the, the local panda caught him and said, just in your imagination, think how much charity you want to give for your father. Just imagine. How much do you want to give? And then, just, just imagination. And then, then he said some huge amount. He said, oh, think some more. And then he said, well, if that's how much you'd like to give in your imagination, then you can give at least, and he said some big, two lakhs or something. Now, in reality, and then he caught him like that. That's his standard trick. And then the bargaining goes on. It's like bargaining with the, in the shop. And then eventually he had, they know the trick to extract much more money than they would have given ordinarily. They're, they're, it's a legalized system of extortion. It's supposed to be, so even Bhaktino Thakur was complaining about that, the pandas in Vrindavan, how they extract money from people. He wasn't very happy. Was it Vrindavan or maybe Guy? I can't remember. So, but, but uh, a real Brahmin, uh, there's, there's very controlled, um, not greedy, they're content uh, with whatever gain comes to them of its own accord. What is that in Gita, Krishna says? Gain which comes of its own accord. What is that verse? Santushto, yeah, there are many such things. Santushto, yena. Uh, they're not disturbed in distress. Samadukha sukham dhiram, yeah, but specifically? No, what is it? No, when you get something, you're not elated. When, no, no, none of us can remember it. Oh, we should all go back to school. Huh? You're in school. You can, you're supposed to know these things. Ah? Uh, Ah, na priya shet priyang prapya, no vijet cha cha priya priyam. Yeah. Which chapter? Fifth chapter. Okay. There are many such statements in Gita. Na prashri shet priyang prapyam, no vijet cha prapya cha priyam. Not elated when you get something when you chew like and not depressed. Yes, I was talking about depression, when you get something which is non-pleasing. So this uh, sadhu, that means detachment from the world. This uh, detachment, you get something, you get a lot of money, oh, and then you think, now I can enjoy. But no, I got money, okay, and, all right. And then you lost everything, oh, okay. <laughs> Knowing I have nothing to do with this world. We see uh, many sadhus who appear to be more renounced than ISKCON sadhus. And sometimes people are they're surprised that how you see or live very opulently. Not like real sadhus who live very simply. But of course, we're supposed to be practicing yukta vairagya, using everything in the service of Krishna. We see 
sad in Rishi case you'll see sadhu they live very very simply <coughs> and uh, but we wonder if they got the opportunity if you were to offer them okay now we'll we'll make you rich like Ambani if they would remain a sadhu many people become sadhus because just things don't work out in their family life and and they just get frustrated and fed up and they become a sadhu not that they not that they materialistic they are it's they are religious but they, it may not be that they become a sadhu primarily out of a desire to brahma jignasa to inquire about the absolute truth but Okay, nothing's working out. I'll go to Rishikesh and live by the Ganga and someone will give me some food and some biddies and we'll go on like that. So we wonder if they were given. Here, you can, here's wealth, you can take it. And we also wonder that uh, here in Iskon also, we, of course, in this ashram, there's not much comfort, but in some Iskon ashrams there's quite a, quite a good level of comfort. So you wonder if that was removed, if the devotees would remove themselves from the situation also. How much comfort do you need? How much are we actually detached? Could we live like the sadhus in Rishikesh? I don't know. It's, it's very cold in the winter up there. I, I saw once at uh, Kurukshetra. Early morning, in the, I was there in the winter. It's very cold there in the winter. And I went early morning chanting. It was still dark by the side of the uh, Brahma Sarova, was it, or the Pancha Samantaka? Those big lakes are there. And just at the side of the lake, all fog on the lake. And there's just some little sh shelter. It's open on, fully open on one side, and there's a cover, and so, and so many sadhus lying there under a blanket. Otherwise, the air was very, very cold. How, how, can you, how can you sleep outside in that weather, even if you have one blanket or two blankets? Very austere. Very austere. Difficult to live like that. Uh, but of course, doing severe austerities in and of itself doesn't necessarily please Krishna. That's the whole point. If we can please Krishna, that's really the point. If we don't please Krishna, then Shrama Eva Hi Kevalam. And actually, some austerities, they can displease Krishna. That's mentioned in the Gita. Austerities that displease Krishna. Can you remember? Chapter 17. Anyone? Did you memorize chapter 17? Yeah? Okay. I've given you a clue. A Shastra, a Shastra Vihitam Gauram. Tapyante, I, I don't remember it, so I kept it. I kept it. Tapyante ye tapo janaha dambha hankara samyukta kama raga balan vitaha. So people who do, who do Shastra, who do austerities which are not given in Shastra. You just make up something. Severe austerities, <clears throat> which are performed out of dambha, pride, ahankara, egoism, with a desire, uh, kama raga balan vitaha, with a with the desire ultimately to enjoy this world, done for the sake of prestige and with material attachment. Then, karshayanta shareras tam bhuta grama, grama macheta saha, mam chayavanta shareras tam tan vidhyasura nischayam. 
Those who undergo severe austerities and penances not recommended in the scriptures, performing them out of pride and egoism, who are impelled by lust and attachment, who are foolish and who torture the material elements of the body as well as the super soul dwelling within are to be known as demons. And Srila Prabhupada in the purport uh, sta states, for instance, fasting for some ulterior purpose such as to promote a purely political end is not mentioned in the scriptural directions. That's an indirect but pretty clear uh, pointing a finger at who? Mahatma Gandhi, fasting for political reasons. To get, people took him to be a great sadhu, saying now he's fasting, but it was for some political end. So Srila Prabhupada counts that here under the kind of uh, tan, what is it? Tan vidya sura nischaya. They're, they're definitely to be, it's going to be considered demoniac. The, the ahanka that stated, it, it may be possible that even if one is uh, following some kind of religious austerity, but there may be a lot of ahanka also, egoism. The, uh, the Naga Babas, they come to Kumbha Mela. They're very renounced. They go around naked, even in the winter. Kumbha Mela comes right in the winter, very cold. Bathing in the Ganga, even if you, even the Ganga in the summer is cold, what to speak of in the winter. But they're very concerned with prestige and they'll, they'll fight. They, they, now they've got it sorted out, but previously there, there used to be fights between Naga Babas, literally, I mean fights. The, the Naga Babas, they were originally, originally formed as a military group, actually, military sadhus. And they would fight, now we're going first to bathe. We're going to show we're, the, we're superior. And they're very concerned with prestige, even though they're so renounced from sense enjoyment, but very much concerned with personal prestige. You might say that about Prabhupada also. He was very concerned with prestige. I'm making a section in the book that I'm working on now, how Prabhupada was very concerned with prestige. He wanted the Krishna consciousness movement to be prestigious. And he himself, he would go in fancy cars, he would dress very nicely, in sadhu dress of course. But the aim, the idea was that people should respect this movement because the, mes the message we need to give to them, not, not that we require prestige for ourselves, but so that people give the proper respect so that they can hear the message which they need to have. Practically within ISKCON, the whole process or the whole institution of giving sannyas, it's only based, up, based on prestige. That's all. But the sannyasi is not supposed to think, now I'm going to be prestigious. But the point is that others, because he's got something which others should hear, that uh, they should respect him. It, it's, it's institutionalized that he should be respected. As I heard many years ago, I didn't ever see it in print, so it may be one of those Prabhupada saids, but uh, one devotee, Adi Keshav Das, young, I think he was 20 years old and Prabhupada gave him sannyas. You might, have, you might have been there. And he was to be the president of this big uh, skyscraper in Manhattan, very prestigious building with so many devotees. And Prabhupada said, I'm giving you sannyas, otherwise no one will listen to you. He had to be the town president. And the devotees had to listen to him, but he was a relatively new devotee, and Prabhupada saw that he was capable. Prabhupada would do that. There was one man, he'd been a businessman all his life, and from Chennai actually, from Madras, he came to Vrindavan, he wanted to take initiation, and Prabhupada made him the president of Iskon Vrindavan. 
just absolutely new man, because he saw he's a capable man. He knows that. In he, Prabhupada brought a Bhakti Charu Maharaj, new man, gave him sannyas. He saw this this man. He's a capable man. So anyway, I'm getting off the topic there, but I'm just saying that Prabhupada, he knew that prestige is there in human society that can also be used for Krishna. Otherwise, we don't care personally for prestige. I, I've been listening to Srila Prabhupada, the conversations with Srila Prabhupada in the, the last months before Prabhupada passed away. Now I'm in the last, there's less than one month ago in my listening, and a lot of the talk is about the the uh, the health situation of Prabhupada. But Prabhupada is, although he was like a, a lion in preaching, and his god brothers would come, and Prabhupada, is, actually, it's not recorded in the uh, transcripts in the Veda base because Prabhupada would speak to them in Bengali, and Prabhupada was so humble. He'd say again, "Please forgive me. I made so many offenses." Uh, he, he's in such a humble mood, and then. One of the discussions, the devotees were saying, what is good? And they were talking about what's good for Prabhupada's health. And Prabhupada said, everyone is good. I am bad. He was feeling like that. So for preaching, he did so many things, but ultimately he was the most humble. Hmm... <clears throat> Everyone is good. I am bad, Prabhupada said. Practically speaking, we could turn that statement around. <laughs> Everyone in the world, except the few people who are in Krishna consciousness, they are bad. And Prabhupada is good. But he saw it around the other way. If there was any, if there was any good in Prabhupada's disciples, it's because he had made them good. <clears throat> who is good? Who is bad? Bhaktisthan Saraswar Thakur fought against the caste Goswamis and so many others, but he also recognized that some of them are very good. Uh, who is good? Who is bad? Jai Bhaje Shai Barawa Bhakta Hinocha. Who worships Krishna, he is great. Who doesn't, however high he may seem to be, he's fallen and wrong, this is the Vaishnav consideration. But then again, you may see some good thing, some bad thing. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada is sometimes, just like we said about Mahatma Gandhi, sometimes very critical, often very critical. Sometimes he was praising him also. That his idea of village development, his brahmacharya, Srila Prabhupada wrote to him a letter, my, my old friend, he considered him like that. So we should see everyone as good, but for preaching we have to see there are differences. People are at different levels. Mm. Someday, who is good, who is bad? Sometimes Prabhupada would have one of his leading devotees chastise others. He wouldn't do it himself. And then the other devotees would think, oh, this devotee, he's really too much. But the order is coming from Prabhupada. <laughs> he has to do it. <laughs> and Prabhupada didn't want to... Uh, sometimes he didn't want to do that to his own disciples. So to have another of his disciples, to ask Tejas Prabhu if he comes here again. He had him do that all the time. <laughs> and then people thought, oh, this Tejas is too, he's too much. Actually, he was too much. <laughs> Very... Uh, very determined to serve Srila Prabhupada and down to the last detail. Prabhupada told you, make life members and 50% for temple construction and 50% for uh, book publication. And he told you, make all the ministers, all the members of parliament, all life members. And then where, how do I maintain the temple? He's also a term president. Well, then you have to find out. So he was out collecting money all day. 
I never gave any money to the temple devotees. So the pujari would be doing six offerings, six cooking six times, and also had to collect the money to feed the deities. <laughs> they didn't like him as the temple president, but he's only doing what Prabhupada said. Prabhupada was tough also. Was he good? Who will say bad? But he could be very tough serving under Prabhupada. In, in, it wasn't always easy. So who is good, who is bad? Yeah. Harava bhaktasya kuto mahanguna manoratena siti dhavato behi. The Bhagavatam makes the sweeping statement that who is not a devotee of Krishna, they have no great qualities. It's all on the, simply they're on the chariot of the mind. So. Mother Teresa wasn't good. Nelson Mandela wasn't good. Yeah, they may be good. They're on the chariot, though, of the mind, which carries us from body to body. And in one life you may be very good, and in the next life you're very bad. It's, a, it's not fixed. It's not your stai bhav, so to speak. It's, you just, now you're good, and then some other time you'll be bad. Saint, what was that name? Saint, was it St. Teresa of Avila or something like that? Sasru Maharaj wrote a whole book on her, on her ecstatic meditation on Christ. How she, she had these ecstatic feelings for Christ. And then he was just writing as he was reading the book. And then toward the end of the book it came that sometimes someone came across her eating venison. You don't know what the word for venison is. It means deer's meat. Mriga monks. And they said to her, well, how come you're eating venison? And she said, well, there's a t well, you're supposed to be a great saint. And she said, well, there's a time for remembering Jesus and there's a time for eating venison, which is not a very... <laughs> That's not Krishna. In Krishna consciousness, we don't have holidays that... In the, uh, in the Shastra, it's allowed for Vaishyas. It's there in Hari Bhakti Vilas. On Diwali day, you can do gambling. It's banned the rest. So in Diwali day, you can, you can do gambling. Because let them, uh, let them do it one day a year. That's all. But we don't have one day off. One day off where we can break all the principles. No way. Not allowed. Finished. Make a vow at initiation. No more illicit sex, no more gambling, no more intoxication, no more meat eating, nothing, finished, all gone. So, we all, that, that's the base level. But then again, Prabhupada didn't say that. He said, people can come to our temple. They can come, they can chant, they can dance. We won't insist, but if they want to be initiated, they want to be serious, they have to follow this. Otherwise, people can come. People are at different levels. Within our movement, there may be some who are very high, some who are struggling, some who are in between, and someone who are really struggling, or maybe they're not even struggling. Maybe they're just fixed at some level where they're, they're living. Just, who has that told me that someone, some senior brahmachari in some place had Someone wanted to join a young man as a brahmachari. He said, why do you want to join? What do you want to be a brahmachari for? He said, well, anyway, I guess it's not too bad. Now I'm senior, they give me an air-conditioned room. And, you know, just a very materialistic outlook. So he was senior, but it seemed he hadn't been going anywhere spiritually all these years. So the whole point of it all, just see how much we are attached to Krishna. That's all. That's the point of all discussions. Every class, how much, we're, how much we are attached to Krishna. The process is there. If we follow it, we should become attached to Krishna. But we have to take association of devotees who really are striving for that that uh, otherwise, because the, the nature of association is a sangat sanjayate kamaha, our desires 
develop according to our association. There's a verse recorded in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu spoken by Hiranya Kashipu, which says that association is like a crystal, that whatever kind of association, if, if, we, if we shine a blue light through, a blue light comes out. If we shine a red light through, a red light comes out. So that's uh, so important. That, uh, that's stated in Chaitanya Charitamrita that uh, Krishna, Bhakti, Krishna Bhakti Janma Mool Hoi Shadu Shanga, the very root from which devotional service develops is association with the devotees. Uh, Krishna Prem, what, what, how does it go? Krishna Prem Uday, I can't remember exactly. Teho Puna Mukya Anga. Krishna Prema Janme Teho Puna Mukya Anga. And even if we get to the level of Krishna Prem, which we should do, it's still, that's essential. So there may be many paths and different levels different opinions within devotional service. Even within our Krishna Consciousness Movement, there are so many different outlooks, so many different opinions, so many different levels of devotees, but we have to keep our aim clear. Where do we want to go? We want to go back home, back to Godhead, back to the lotus feet of Krishna. So some may, some may be very analytical and philosophical, some devotees may be into deity worship, some may be into festivals, there's so many different types of devotees, but we have to see how we're becoming attached to Krishna. Without that, everything is useless. Toma Kripa Bina Shokali Nirasha as Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur prays, without your mercy, everything is hopeless. Any question, please? No, Jai. Hare Krishna. Shri Shri Gauranetai Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Solinus Bhakti Vikas Maharaji Ki Jai.